Welcome to The Dish. I'm your host, Anna Christina. Thank you for tuning in. We have a great show lined up for you, and because it's Third Friday, first we're going to be in the kitchen. Chef Greg Mueller, he's a world chef, certified master chef. He's joining me right now. Hello, how are you? Wonderful, how are you doing today? Good, okay, and I didn't mention you're also the director of food and nutrition out at Doctors Hospital right yeah, here absolutely. in absolutely. Augusta. But how about that title? Only one of 18 in the entire world. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm sure there'll be more that'll uh, go after it in the future. So yeah. at least I can claim one of 18 for right now and uh, that prepare, is prepare a good dish for you guys today to, to taste. Yeah, so. super amazing. And you actually are introducing something that we've never done on the show before. It's a great technique used by not too many. Absolutely, yeah. It's, so it's becoming more popular it. now, but the technique is called sous vide cooking. Okay. Uh, this piece of equipment is an immersion circulator. Uh, I got the joke coming in the front door that where's, what do I have an aquarium, what am I yeah. going to cook? What are you carrying a um, fish tank for, right? <laughs> so this technique really got started. It was uh, created in Greenville, South Carolina wow. in the late 70s for healthcare. Near home. Um, so when it was introduced, people thought it was kind of crazy, and then it went overseas. The French chefs really took it to heart and uh, really drove the process. Okay. Um, I'd say it's mainstream for the last 12, 15 years or so. It's a good trick for those professional chefs. What this is doing, it's basically heating and circulating this water bath so that um, it's exactly 132 and a half degrees, mm -hmm. which is perfect medium rare for uh, we're cooking a beef tenderloin today. Um, and the beauty of this technology is the way it's cooking mm -hmm. is it's top to bottom, left to right, no matter how big that piece of meat is, it's perfectly medium rare. It's going to be cooked all the way through mm -hmm. it. Yep. So rare. we've actually, wow. the sous vide actually means under pressure. Mm -hmm. So we have a cryovac, a piece of tenderloin with just a little bit of butter, some pepper blend, and some whole uh, garlic cloves. Yeah. And this cooking process couldn't be any easier because I'm just going to put it in. And Drop it in, it. there you go. Wow. Forget about so it. So then you can go and do other things. Can do other Especially things. Especially if you're a mom. What a great idea for moms out there that are yeah. trying to do multitask. Absolutely. Yeah. Go uh, drop it in, run to soccer, come back, see it, you're good there to you go. go. Um, and you can't worry about overcooking it because it stays the same temperature. Absolutely, this tank will stay right at 132 and a half degrees and, and, and cook for days. But this piece of meat will be done in about 90 minutes to about uh, two hours or so. Okay. Um, any more than that, it gets almost a little too tender. So things mm -hmm. like chicken are great, uh, cooked a little bit higher for about 45 minutes. Fish, you can really bring that temperature down like butter poached, lo yeah. butter poached lobster at 108 degrees for uh, 20 minutes is perfect. Sounds so we'll, yummy too. We'll come, we'll come back to that in a little bit. So tell me, the, the full recipe, what are we making today? So we're going to make a wild mushroom risotto with mm -hmm. uh, sausage Swiss chard. We've got our uh, sous vide beef tenderloin mm -hmm. with a little bit of uh, Cabernet or butter. Mm. So it'll be quite delicious. So we've Sounds got a, so a cast iron enamel pot here, okay. crazy hot. We've got some beautiful wild mushrooms here, some hen of the woods, Han Shumanjis, both uh, white and brown Those Han so mushrooms. They're, they're, <laughs> they're perfect. So what we'll do is we have this pan screaming hot, and I love risotto. It was, uh, I do too. One of the oh first things goodness. I learned how to make, uh, my grandmother, uh, she just turned 90 years old a couple weeks ago, yeah. uh, showed me how to make um, risotto. So well, the, happy birthday to her. Yeah. Shout out to your grandma. There you go. Um, so one thing about mushrooms is they have a lot of water to them. Okay. So you really want to cook them out. Okay. So um, it's okay. You can let it cook, mm -hmm. get it brown. Don't add salt because salt's going to pull out some of that water. So we want to uh, kind of give them a toast. And you can mm -hmm. see we're getting a good bit of color there. Yeah. Once they get a good bit of brown, we'll add our onions, start to caramelize that a little bit, add our arborio rice. And the secret to risotto is stirring. Okay. So we have heavy-duty wood spoon here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to break on us. And we were going to do, and go ahead and, and just stir yes. away. Yes, so make me a chef for a day. So we really want to develop some color on the bottom of that pan. That's called okay. fond. Mm -hmm. That's all that delicious flavor. The more yeah. of that there is, the, the better our, our risotto is going to be. So we'll add just a little bit of onion there. Mix that up too. Yep, go ahead. I love caramelized onions. So we'll hit it with a little bit of pepper blend mm -hmm. just to kind of toast all of those aromatics and be really fragrant. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful that looks and the smell, like you said. So we really want to let that go about, about five minutes or so. Okay. And then next step then is the arborio over. rice. And to make it not be a glutinous mush, mm -hmm. you really want to toast the rice. Okay. Okay. And since we are developing color here, it's okay to do. About how long would you do that for? Um, at least six minutes. Six minutes. Because okay. you really want to get a nice toast on the grain. Mm -hmm. You really want to dry out more of that that uh, moisture in the mushrooms yeah. and develop some of that color. When that's almost uh, almost there, add some oil. We will. It's actually white wine. White wine. White wine. Oh, See, I even fooled you. If, if I put it in a wine glass, <laughs> it'll be good to go. Yeah. 
<laughs> doesn't need to be anything fancy, um, good enough okay. to drink. So typically, you know, cooking, at least for me at the house, is, mm -hmm. is more of a, a pleasurable experience. Yeah. Have a glass of wine when you're enjoying yourself. Just make While sure you're doing the it. knife work is done so we don't cut ourselves. We don't, <laughs> right? need, any, we don't need any ER visits at the, hospital, the hospital. But if you have to go to the hospital, doctors is, is a great facility yeah. to go to. So you can see we've got a good bit of color yeah. there. We're going to hit this with a little bit of wine. We're going to deglaze that a little bit. Make and we want to stir. Again. Absolutely. Okay. So what we're doing now is we're releasing all of that starch mm. in the rice. And uh, short grain rice starch is amylopectin, kind of has a long name for such a short yeah. rice. But you don't need to add cream to your to your risotto. That's one thing just that I wine. just just more wine. <laughs> yeah. It's it should be loose and, and and have a nice flow to it. It shouldn't be super sticky. Okay. So Am I stirring we'll, it too much? No, you you okay. keep stirring. You can't stir keep it enough. Keep going. Yeah. Um, and then what you want to do is when it evaporates, you uh -huh. hit it with a little bit of chicken stock. Okay. And let that evaporate, and then keep doing it. This process will take about 18 to 22 minutes or okay. so total. So not bad. Yeah. And Look then once it once it evaporates, we'll we'll hit it with more stock, and we really want to keep stirring to re release all that so starch. So really, any all the other flavors, I mean, are coming from the wine, the pepper mix, the that mushrooms, you put in there, mushrooms. Absolutely. And we'll finish it so off good. with a little bit of a uh, little bit of cheese and. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we're gonna let this sit and cook, and then. We'll go to commercial break. Yep. When we come back, we're going to finish off the recipe. Absolutely. And then you can't miss my beauty basics. Plus, did you know that you can check out your remodeled home before it's even remodeled? All right, do not go anywhere. We have some technology you're going to want to see. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Dish. I'm joined on set in the kitchen with Chef Greg Mueller. He's a director of food and nutrition at a doctor's hospital. And I have to brag about you again. You're one of 18 World Chef certified master chefs. Yeah. So if you're just tuning in, we have an amazing guest joining us. And you are making something that is going to be so tasty because I could smell it and I just want to eat it already. Talk Absolutely. to us about what it is and the process that you're doing. Absolutely. So the risotto here we started earlier is almost finished. It's about 85% done. There's a little, okay. little tooth to the rice. We'll add some Parmesan cheese to finish it off at the last mm. minute. And then so to kind of wrap it up and make it healthy, we've got some beautiful Swiss chard. Okay. Uh, kind of a, a green that goes kind of past by. It's not a collard. It's That's not so a turnip green, but they're beautiful. <laughs> so you can use the whole thing. So okay. the stem, very easy to cut them. Just cut the stem out. So you do get rid of that part? No, we actually are going to wow. use it. So what I'll do is I'll fold this over mm -hmm. and then real quick just give this a julienne. I'm glad you're doing that. Not you me. know. <laughs> we have a claw method in the kitchen that you keep, uh -huh. keep your fingertips back. Oh, there you go. Tip for y'all at home. Absolutely. You're going to try this? Absolutely. And then we'll go ahead and julienne the stems. You cut about an inch off the bottom or so because it's really fibrous and dry. Mm -hmm. But it almost has a texture of celery. So we'll That's what I was and, just going to say. That's we'll go ahead like. and cut it um, into juliennes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and great flavor, color, and texture contrast in the, in the stems. There so what we can is. do is they take a little longer to cook than mm -hmm. the leaves themselves. So okay. in a hot pan here, we're going to grab just a little bit of butter. You can use olive like oil. We'll add, some of our, we'll add some of our stems. Absolutely. We'll get some pinks, some greens, color. some purples. Okay. We'll give those just a little bit, hit them a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. That's sea salt. It is, in it? fact, yep. I love sea salt. Crunchy. Touch of onion. Mm -hmm. Touch of minced garlic. Not too much. Don't want to let it overpower Absolutely. anything, right? We're going to hit and this. And some more wine. With just a it little bit. It is wine. I thought it was oil, but wine's better than oil. A little oil. bit of wine. <laughs> and that steam is going to help poach our greens as well and, and mm -hmm. wilt them down real nice. Okay. So we'll let this saute for about three to five minutes or so, and that's good to so go. So not too long. You not don't want to get it too much. And then right? back to the steak here. Now, this is poaching in a little bit of butter. Now, so tell and me garlic. a little bit about the process again. So for those of you that are just tuning in, it's so we've the, the technique simple. is called sous vide, mm -hmm. uh, and you can find find home units for for very affordable. Amazon.com is a great a great tool here. We'll go ahead and discard the, the juice in the bag. Mm -hmm. You don't you need to utilize that for anything. Okay. And if you look, the what this steak is missing is its color, mm -hmm. right? So we want that delicious crunchy texture. That Maillard reaction is what it's called. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and we'll we'll dry this off just a little bit. Hit it with a little bit of salt. I don't okay. salt the meat before because it tends to get a little different texture. Almost, it almost cures a little bit. Okay. So it's not something that we we want to so do. We don't want to do it beforehand. We don't. We're going to get a hot pan here. We want to sear that brown that a little bit. We do. We're going to get that delicious caramelized flavor. Well, what's neat about this process is that you can't really overcook or undercook because you're setting it at the particular temperature. Exactly. That you so this piece of meat's about four inches long, about mm -hmm. three inches thick. It's perfectly medium rare, top to bottom, mm -hmm. left to right. So what we're going to do is we're going to get That's this in a hot pan amazing. and we're going to baste this and sear it 
with a little bit of butter. So these greens, so good. absolutely. It'll be delicious when you plate it up. And the beauty mm -hmm. of this way of cooking it is you, the meat doesn't need to rest. Okay. So typically cooking at your house, you're cooking a large roast, a turkey. It's got to sit on the counter for about 45 for minutes. Bit. Since this never got higher than 32 and a half, 132 and a half degrees, we never have to worry about letting it rest. So we can okay. literally sear it, and slice it, serve it, and you're good to go. Woo. You also get more I'm yield. Good with that. <laughs> so, you know, we all go to the grocery store. It's really expensive. Mm -hmm. Cooking with this technique, you actually save about 15 to 20 percent of your product. Hmm. So when you cook a steak like this and you get home, you buy a big steak and it's It'll a little cutlet. Down. Exactly. Yeah. You get a lot, a lot stronger yield. I love that. So we'll do Nothing wrong with that, right? Not at so all. So we're going to let this sear. We're yep. going to let this wilt down. Mm -hmm. This is almost ready to go. We'll plate that. When we come back, I'm going to be giving away my beauty basics. Then, of course, i got to try it, right? Absolutely. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Dish. It is time for our beauty basic. And I'll start off with this information. Have you ever wondered why you can get to be so thirsty sometimes? Well, the adult body is made up of 60% of water. And if you lose just 1% of that water, you can feel dehydrated, hence why you're thirsty. And so it's important ladies and gentlemen, to be drinking water, and all of this according to water.usgs.gov, but you should, I think it's an eight by eight rule, okay? So you should drink about eight glasses of eight ounces of water per day, and I know that there's something according to your weight that may vary, but it's not just important for the obvious reasons, but we have an image to kind of help you see what else drinking water can help you with. And it's right here on the screen for you. Um, at the top left, it says form saliva. And this is great for digestion. Um, it helps flush body waste, mainly through urine. It also helps lubricate joints and also helps deliver oxygen all over the body, which is important for the entire functioning of your body. And it might also help with your skin plus your metabolism. So it's important to drink water. So that's my beauty basic for today. All right, I'm headed back into the kitchen with Chef Greg Mueller, World Chef Certified Master Chef. And look at this masterpiece right here. Finish with a little bit of that salt and pepper. That is beautiful. And we have some uh, thyme Cabernet herb butter for the top that'll kind of uh -huh. melt around over the top. And oh my goodness. Fantastic. So this is butter. It is butter. Cab butter. Yeah, Cabernet. So took a bottle Some of Cabernet, re reduced it, reduced it down to a syrup, <laughs> yeah. and it'll kind of melt and kind of garnish everything. So I think it's time for me to try this, I, right? I think it is absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this up over here. Now tell me, talk to me about the and you process can see again. it's it's perfectly medium rare, top mm -hmm. to bottom, left to right. It there's looks no beautiful. there's no um, you know uh, dark brown, mm -hmm. gray, pink, yeah. red. It's perfect. It'll eat like uh, it'll eat like butter. They say. So talk to me about the process again for those that are just tuning yep. in. So we cooked it in an immersion circulator in a water bath, a little uh, garlic mm. and, and butter for about two and a half hours. Um, and then Melting. Literally melting. Melting in my mouth. It is so good, y'all. Yeah. It's a great technique for fish, uh, tough cuts of meat you can cook for yeah. up to 72 hours. It's, Amazing it's, it's technique. And like you said, you can't really go wrong. You can't overcook it. Absolutely. And obviously, look how beautiful that is. Um, and I'll have to try the risotto because risotto is my favorite. <laughs> but so good. So where can... Do you cook out in, in you know, for people? Can for, they get your information? For, for some people, I do. Because you might want to. <laughs> yeah. I, in my position at the hospital now, we, we mm -hmm. are responsible for all the patient dining, all the catering, mm -hmm. all the cafe. And that's really our focus is making sure the patients can have the best experience possible. And hopefully our food can be a component of that. Yeah. Um, as far as doing outside stuff, I mean, I, I've spent some time in clubs and catering. And, and I know you did some stuff for the Masters, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, but it's nice to be home with family and be able to do yeah. all the soccer and baseball games. Three kids, oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, listen, I was just kind of being nice and not wanting to look like an animal on here but we're going to take a break and I'm going to eat the rest of this and when we come back we have more on the new technology to check out your remodeled home before it's actually remodeled well thank you so much You're Chef, for joining me I Absolutely. appreciate it what an honor all right we'll be right back